God. Yeah, thank God. I don't like looking at you either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rexai ban out of the gate from SK Telecom. That's right, Rexai. Uh, a bit surprising because Bengi has had such a priority on Rexai in his matches. So I'm wondering where they're going to go for this. Probably maybe an early Evelyn. Maybe yeah. they want the Evelyn pick. Yeah. So the, just to get rid of that tremor sense, make sure you know Bengi can get around, use that invisibility to the full extent. Nautilus ban followed by an Evelyn ban from yeah. Spenny Sonic Boom. That makes sense. Of course, Bengi. Definitely not the top Grogus player here in Korea. And, and SKT tends to shy away from that Grogus pick. They could ban it last here and try and put Bengi on something different. But if not, they're going to be pigeonholed into first picking the Grogus. But they are going to take it out. And now is the Alistair going away? One of Wolf's top champions and something that SKT really likes to play around with. Well, let's see. The Alistar is a strong pick, but Wolf has such, Wolf also has a fairly decent champion pool. He has that cannon pocket pick, so maybe if you just don't want to deal with the Alistar because it's such a power pick, maybe you'd ban it, but if you're trying to target Wolf specifically, I think he'll be comfortable on something else as well. So Sivir or Alistar, the likely first picks here for SK Telecom, if they can get their hands on them, although SKT, not as much of a Sivir-focused team as many in this league. In a lot of ways, they prefer to play with that Corky when possible. So they're going to give Sivir over to Nuclear for sure in the first round of this draft. And then Bengi will be left uh, seeing what he can get in the jungle right now. A lot of those priority picks fallen by the wayside. Well, it looks like Spenu is hovering over the Maokai as well, which I think is a fairly good pick here. Uh, Rumble, uh, Mar no slouch on Maokai, but he's also a fantastic Rumble player. So. Yeah, he's just going to pick Rumble, I think, if the Maokai gets locked in, and he shouldn't have any trouble playing that champion, one of his most, actually his most played champion this season overall. Yeah. So even though they're going to deny the Maokai, I don't think that SK Telecom is likely too concerned. So if they lock this in, Spenu might be going for a hard engage composition with just these two yeah. pieces. Oh. oh, Thresh. Wow, the Thresh priority coming out very early. So will the Rumble or the Maokai be selected by SK Telecom? They probably will take Corky in this scenario. Even though SKT have been playing more Tristana recently, they played Tristana in their last game with a Kennen support versus Janair. I have to say, I don't think it worked very well. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't really sold on the Trist Kennen lane. They seem to have some troubles with it, and they very nearly lost that game. I feel like if you're going to play a Kennen support, you want to synergize. Oh, whoa, an Echo pick. Yeah, you want to synergize that Kennen with maybe another lane bully AD carry that can do uh, poke damage as well. Then you just really double down on the amount of uh, uh, poke damage that you do in lane. Well, the Echo. Is this. Faker's Echo is going to be the big question. It's obviously a champion that we have really wanted to see him play. It is still 5.11 this week in Korea, so that is not going to be a nerfed Echo. That mm -hmm. is going to be a very powerful Echo indeed. So uh, I know a lot of, we talked about this yesterday, a lot of the Korean teams have said, we don't like Echo that much. Yeah. This region has played it significantly less than the LCS regions and the LPL. Um, they don't most Korean players think he will be unplayable on 5.12. Right. Especially after the uh, mana cost addition to his ultimate, along with um, along with uh, nerfs to his passive and other uh, damage sources. So, Azir and Maokai are going to be the answering picks from Spenu. So, a very safe composition that they've managed to cobble together so far. They will not be going for the Lulu mid that they had the last time they won a game, and there is Bengi yawning as usual. And Bang is trolling Cloud Templar with the Amumu and Shen hovers. <laughs> he actually doesn't I sound just, that happy right now about I, it. I, I, I actually love that this has now been going on for years. Two years now at this yeah, point, yeah, almost. Yeah, so huh. two years of trolling Cloud Templar in picks and bans to the degree that a team was actually banned from champions. <laughs> <laughs> That's how far it has gone the, to the end point. The legendary <laughs> Team Dark with their uh, Cloud Templar composition. I think they were missing the poking Lee Sin in there. I'm not sure. But Victor Hover along with the Fizz. So will this be a Echo Jungle or Fizz Top? 
That's going to be the question. We don't know. Either way, you have to think that this is not a very Marin or Bengi-like pick right here. Uh, I'm going to imagine it's going to be Echo Jungle and Fizz Top just because yeah. uh, that makes more sense, generally speaking. The, the Fizz jungles are not very efficient in terms of their clear, and I just think it's it's a pretty lackluster pick as far as junglers go right now. Echo, on the other hand, I think is quite good yeah. at the moment. Well, we also, if you look at his summoners um, from Marn currently, it's Ignite Teleport, which is a little, which would be a little bit different from most uh, top lane Fizzes, so. That's true. It, it could be Marin. Very interesting to think that they would be putting on uh, Marin more on a uh, a heavy damage dueling top laner. Yeah. He but. might just go full AD as well, even though it got nerfed. I mean, there's the possibility. There is that possibility. Well, we could see a Nocturne with all of these jungle picks that are currently off the board, but it will be the Jarvan lock, a champion that we've been seeing more frequently these days with a lot of nerfs to the other junglers. Yeah, um, but not that much in Korea. But usually we don't have three jungle bands either. So yeah, the only real person that the Jarvan can reliably get on onto um, is the Victor here, right? Because then the Echo can phase dive out of it. Then you have the Fizz that can play full Trickster out of it. You have the Corky that can Valkyrie out of it. So a little bit of a questionable, questionable pick. Maybe they're trying to chain it into a strong top lane ganks with the Maokai and the Jarvan flag and drag combo. So. Yeah. A little odd. I, I think that the Lee Sin probably is a superior pick right here. It gives you a little bit more presence and damage for dueling in the early game. But we'll see how it works out for Catch. He's going for a big team fighting jungler alongside the rest of his team. Just very focused on these 5v5s right now. SK Telecom, it will be Marin on the Fizz top, Bengi and the Echo jungle. So Marin is going Ignite Teleport Fizz top lane. Yeah. Uh, so that is going to be very, very aggressive. Also means we will not see a Cinder Hulk. So this is a departure from some of the other Fizz builds we've seen. Definitely. Uh, I'm curious as to what he's going to pick up in terms of his itemization here on the top side. And Bengi will make his debut on Echo. Exciting to see a new champion. And, and remember that Victor is still a champion faker, is professionally undefeated on. He's 6-0 yeah. now, I believe. I'll check it in just a second. But definitely a dangerous pick for SK Telecom. And we are about to get into the game. SKT versus Spenu, game one. Welcome to game one. Spenu versus SK Telecom. Uh, let's take a look. Yes, Faker is 6-0 and on that victor all time. Strong, strong performance. And we see Spenu Sonic Boom moving into the bottom lane, uh, the bottom side of SKT's jungle as a five-man unit. Trying to ward some brushes, get some vision. And the last time we saw Faker play victor, it was in their match versus Jin Air from a week ago, yeah. and that game, what's so scary about Faker's victor is he could completely take over. I'm thinking yeah. he ended that game 3-0 and 1, but he took like five turrets just through map pressure, and they couldn't remove him from auto-attacking turrets because he, uh, it took two to three people to stop him from pushing lanes, and he was very safe about it. So this is a champion where he's got the mechanics, but he also knows the limits of how far he can put the pressure. Now they know the wards are in their side of the jungle. This has been an increasingly common strategy. And Parallel convergence, here we go. Alistair, oh there's a stun. Lord. Oh jeez, Death Ray goes down. There's a play, but somebody from Spen is gonna be going down right here. Marin on the side, he's got the ignite down. Catch has to flash over the wall. First and blood. that is first blood to Corky. Faker's gonna have another Death Ray up it right now. And there's two for SK Telecom as they sense out exactly what Spenny wants to do. And nope. Oh, right at the edge. Perfect. Parallel well convergence. Absolutely perfect. And that'll be another kill for Bang. And well, what that's <laughs> about the end of this one, I think, guys. GG, FF, that's funny. <laughs> well, they were not expecting that ward to be there. 
in the uh, nope. in the brush of the red buff. But somebody finally punishes this uh, this invade that we've been seeing more yeah. frequently. I mean, this has been a big trend in the past two weeks, that ward formation, and them going in. SKT is ready. They have a ward already uh, placed, and then they collapse. But, man, that was a nearly perfect engage with the W start from Bengi, and then the Alistair pulverize. It really couldn't have been set up much be better. Just a beautiful level one fight. Yeah, it was like a three, four-man stun with the parallel convergence and straight into pulverize. Yeah, dirty, dirty stuff. And look at Bang <laughs> with a <laughs> oh, ruby geez. crystal and a long sword and boots. Oh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, that <laughs> happened. Uh, nice level two gank there from Catch. Good adaptation from Spenu. Uh, Faker probably just doing his usual Faker play super aggressive, whether or not I have summoners thing. Yeah. Sasan had flash right there. Faker had no summoners after the level one, so he gets punished for it. Really not going to be too terribly big of a deal, considering that the kill went over to Catch. Right. And not to Sasan, and Faker already has a kill and two assists. And Bengi right now in Spenu's top lane, uh, top side jungle, and we're going to see this again. He definitely did not expect Catch to come from that angle. Yeah. Uh, Spenu actually, that was a pretty clever maneuver, not even getting the buff, instead getting uh, Catch coming back from the side of the jungle that Faker thought was safe based on the fact that that's where the level one fight was. Nice mind game there. Yeah, well played. But the cost of that uh, gank is going to be that he Catch will be three buffed. Yes. So, perhaps a little bit troublesome, but three buffing definitely worth that kill onto Faker. Yeah. Would have been better if that kill had gone onto the Zier. Yes. But. Yeah, significantly better indeed, but uh, so now Spenny only finds themselves uh, to about 800 gold behind. However, how is this going to translate into some pretty big snowballs in this laning phase? Sivir's not going to be able to really. Uh, abuse that matchup a whole lot. They're gonna try and kill Faker again. They want him while his summoners are down. Faker smells something fishy right now and he's staying further back. They know Secret's missing, so that might have been the big tell. They yeah. saw Secret move up the river, so he's gonna ward. A fine Secret in the bush right there. Gives him a death ray in parting and catch is seen by Bengi, who starts dropping some pink wards around the river just to keep Faker a little bit safer until he can get that flash and the heal back up. And looks like this Fizz is an AD Fizz. So probably gonna go Triforce first, maybe into a Blade of the Ruined King as well, followed by tank items. So he's going to be maxing his uh, his W first, Sea Stone Trident. Yeah, I'm excited to see Marin play some more like Assassin Champions too, because it's just not something Marin does. Right, and what, back when he debuted, he was known for playing heavy roaming top laners back in Soul Queue with his big hype. Uh-oh, parallel convergence. Soul gonna dodge out that, heads down to the bottom side, catches there. Remember, Bengi has two buffs, and that's not going to be a successful gank in the end. Soul not even having to burn a summoner spell right there as Wolf walks into the mid lane. Both jungles see each other and walk away. It's a truce, you know. Yeah, two ships passing in the night. No, not in the night. Not in the night. They can see each other. So <laughs> definitely not two ships passing in the day, Barry. All right. You've got me there. <laughs> well, Baker's you starting to get pushed in a little bit. See, that's part of the power of casting is you have mm -hmm. to know your idioms, Barry. Uh, see, English is my second language, so, you know, oh, that, that's, my, uh, that's my excuse right here. <laughs> Yes. It really is, actually. I, I, I know, but you learned both at such a young young age that it's not, not really an excuse, is it? Uh, you'll never let me have any. Oh, I, I thought you have fun. You're on the broadcast right now. True. <laughs> that is very true. Well, things have slowed down a little bit. We see a bit of a tussle in the top lane. Oh, yes, the river back and forth. Marin still hasn't gone back to buy yet, though. So. Yeah. He's going to get pushed out a little bit, but he's not too worried. He's going to be able to get to that wave just fine. They're going back and starting to pick up some pieces of his Trinity Force. Sheen first. It will be Faker getting zoned out pretty heavily, though. He's actually falling significantly behind in terms of CS. And Faker is a player who is, on average, 12 CS up at 10 minutes and 300 gold up on his laning partner. That's, or opponent, rather. That's one of the most, I think, 
important statistics to keep in mind about yeah. Faker is that having 300 gold ahead of the enemy mid laner at 10 minutes is a huge amount of gold to be ahead on average. Definitely, and it's like, what, three-fourths of an amp tome right there? So yes. The fact that you can get your items damage quicker and going to push out Saucen of the lane. Yes, yeah, so once you get rid of him right there, Faker has gone for another Doran's Blade Forbidden Idol for Saucen after that shop when he got some assist gold. But he's still 20 CS in the lead, so having a good time after Ooh. that gank. Wolf gets he gets found uh, trying to be cute around the enemy blue buff, seeing if anybody was going to walk in there. Deep Ward's already in, though, courtesy of Echo and Bengi. And look at this. Pink Ward's on either side of the mid lane. Deep Ward's on the bottom side. This team plays around Faker so much. As well as they should too. Yeah, they want to go after this blue buff back when it or when it's going to respawn. Yeah. So, well, in the bottom lane we see a BF sword versus a Sheen and uh, almost Phage. Almost Phage not going to complete that item, but Bang's CS lead is pretty commanding at the moment, and Marin starting to create a gap in the top side. This is uh, definitely looking pretty focused on SKT right now, especially after that level one. Bengi's here with the red buff. No level six yet mm -hmm. for the Chrono Break. He gets seen, though. Bengi doesn't know the exact timing of the blue buff, so he's backing off right now and going to go do his Raptors, but surely the wards will show uh, catch going towards the blue eventually. Yeah, it's up right now, as a matter of fact. And so we'll wait to see what exactly SKT wants to do. When it comes to contesting this blue earth. Now, the ward is timed out that saw Bengi previously, so he's going to be able to walk up. There's some aggression onto Secret. Combo goes down. Secret pulls catch in. Wolf's going to just get a flash the flag and drag. And now, Boomerang Blade goes out, but very inconclusive engagement. They saw Bengi coming down, I believe. Right. And Secret got chunked out so hard at the beginning of that engage, too. So even if, the, even if they had continued, probably at least traded one for one. Okay, Catch just dropped a ward over the wall into the river brush, so Bengi is seen and now still trying to make some moves on this side of the map. Soul pops his ultimate right there. Marin doesn't have an ult right now. Fish was used. No ignite though. Didn't see a, an angle for a kill. Now, SKT has to be careful here. They do not have TP, and Soul does. And even though Spenu's TPs are pretty sad most of the time, that is still going to be a difficult battle to fight if it ends up being a 4v5. So they're just going to go ahead and give it up. Meanwhile, Secret taking the worst end of a trade yet again in the bottom side. There's not much he can do because just that the sheer amount of uh, burst that comes from the Sheen on top of all the magic damage. Thresh just doesn't have enough armor to deal with this because he just passively doesn't have an, uh, gain armor. Yeah, he is uh, <clears throat> squishier in the early game than I think a lot of people suspect. And yeah, just not a whole lot of action ever since that level one. Bengi going to hide in the brush right here. Just I wait. I think he was seen. Yeah, I think he was as well. Marn feigning down the river. Just going to recall. Handing over the blue buff, so cooldown boots for Faker. He's going to be able to spam a lot more of those death rays to clear out the wave. Along with his uh, first upgrade on the death laser, so hopefully hopefully he'll be able to catch up in CS at this point. Would be would be great for him if he could, but he's actually just been losing ground in that department yeah. for most of this game so far. So credit to Sasen, tough situation. Figure it was 1-0-2 going in lane, but he and Catch really made it work. Got a kill, tried to start turning things around, and they've uh, maintained mostly that gold gap that we've seen. Uh, ever since that level one engagement. It's gotten only just a little bit bigger. Yeah. We'll see when either team decides to pull the trigger on going for that dragon, because I think that's going to start the make or, that's going to be the make or break point for this game, that first dragon fight, when it happens. Corky getting scary, yeah. And speaking of that dragon, if that Trinity Force is done soon, they're going to have a chance to go for it. But... That is going to be a very early Trinity Force. Normally we would see Corky picking it up between 14 and 15 minutes, but thanks to the kills, it's going to be 
faster if he wants it. I mean, he already has it, I'm sure, if he wanted yeah. to go back right now. It's just now. 78 more gold from that point on right there. So they're just backing off. They get the wards down. But Sasson will use his soldiers to take out the pink ward and the pixel brush. Yeah, those pink wards, especially that one right there in the bottom brush, have stuck around for quite some time. They are finally getting denied vision, but Ooh. here comes an engagement. Bengi coming in over the wall. Catch may just take the lantern out. Yes, and Nuclear has to use his ultimate just to disengage. So they are very scared of fighting SKT right now. Soul under the Ooh. turret. Oh, that was a beautiful bait. Wow. Well played. Uh, He's got ah. him. That was extremely well played. Just getting him, baiting him into the twisted advance under the turret and then hopping right back out of turret aggro to carry yeah, him. That urchin strike was super good. <laughs> well played. Marin definitely showing off some neat little mechanical tricks and mind games on this Fizz. And you know, SK Telecom is a team that puts so many resources into the top lane. One of the reasons why Marin has such a high GPM, first off, part of it is he's his team is winning all the games. Sure, oh, yeah, of course, that sure. helps, naturally. But uh, it's also because they give Marn a lot of farm. Mm -hmm. uh, Bang is really the one who suffers in terms of farming on SKT when it comes to who's going to get, be assigned to lane to really pick up a lot of CS. And when Marn's on a champion like Fizz where he can really get going, that is quite nice indeed. And that's just because SK Telecom is more of a solo lane centric team. They have the jungler, you know, really just shoring up the solo lane, make sure they get ahead. And, you know, Bang's just like fantastic player, Bang, but he's also a role player. He cleans up in fights and just makes sure he gets steady damage down. Yeah, absolutely. And SKT definitely a team that knows their identity, which is why I've been surprised that we've seen Marin just kind of prioritize a lot of tanky champions or rumble for fighting in the mid game, but not go for some more f fancy mechanical champions yeah. like Fizz that add another backline threat. Because usually Marin is just a frontliner. He's not the one threatening the backline in a major way. Mm -hmm. So interesting to see him, especially because he's, after playing a lot of Hecarim last season, it's really dropped off for him this yeah, time around. He's a little he, odd. Yeah, hasn't, hasn't really been there on some of these teleport engagers, but showing off some skills in the top side. Oof. There's a bit of a fight going on top lane. Soul runs away. And meanwhile, Catch has just been setting up. He just pitched a 10 in that brush. He's been there for the last minute or so. Yeah, I'm not sure he's actually going to get much of anything right here. Faker playing very conservatively at the moment. And now the rest of SKT moving into the river. So both Trinity forces are complete on yeah. the Fizz and the Corky. So they might want to fight this dragon. Well, they definitely want to start fighting something, whether that's going to be the dragon or trying to take away this blue buff. They are in a very good position to do it. Faker has another upgrade onto his hex score. So he's got some more mobility off of his Q. Both teleports are up for top laner. So if they decide to fight here, the, both of them can come down. We'll have a 5v5, but catch manager just run away. I don't think Spenu can fight this. There's the hook coming in. They missed a skill shot. Do they want to commit to this? Ooh. There we go. There's a knockover secret over the wall after the flash from Wolf, Chaos Storm. Actually going to take the blue buff. Marin already there, misses the fish. Sasan trying to do what he can, but he's going to dodge some rockets on the other side of the wall and then back off. Ooh, most likely going to be SKT's dragon. I don't see any way Spenu can somehow steal it away. So they get this one pretty much for free, I guess. Yeah, pretty easily. That was a great flash by Wolf. Wolf has yeah. really been committing to the Alistair this game in terms of getting that crowd control down. We saw that flash at level one, and then again, and right at the blue buff. So a nicely aggressive play. SK Telecom knowing what the cooldowns were, and they catch him out after he shows himself on the hook. Marin here, Ooh. the top side, Soul has his ultimate up, but Marin going to get knocked up by Jarvan. They're going head to head at the moment. There's the ignite, he kills catch, and then he just playful wow. tricksters out the 1v2 win to Marin. And but can he defend this turret? Thresh is coming up. Uh, yes. Oh, well, he will. I'm going to go with yes. It's not really much you can do to dive this guy right now. Marin doesn't have a lot of HP left on his turret. One thing Sol has been able to do is put a lot of pressure on the tower. Well. 
Same thing in the mid lane, actually. Baron coming in, Bengi is here. There's the fish, parallel convergence, and he's got a flash, and actually flash right to the proper spot. Doesn't get zoned out by that, but has his summoner spell used in the top side. Yep, flash down from Maokai, so we'll see if Spenu just wants to just hold lanes, keep farming. Tower, a single tower, no tower has gone down. It's been 18 minutes into the game, which is fairly late, I think. But we'll see if they just try to extend this laning phase. But I feel like extending the laning phase is just playing into SKT's hand right now. Well, Svenu has done a good job of chipping out the top and mid turrets. That's one of the weaknesses of playing that top fizz. Bengi just going to smite that red buff away. Uh, actually, I think Catch got uh, it. Catch got it. That was a little weird, but it looked like it went the other way. But that is Catch with the red buff. And uh, just in terms of the chip damage onto the tower, that's something that you can get if you are playing Fizz, or against a Fizz, rather, is his wave clear is very minimal, mm -hmm. especially since he's just not going to max that E in lane. And you open yourself up to dive opportunities if you use your E to clear a wave. All right, well, Marn goes for some little bit damage. He's trying to zone Soul off of the wave. Goes back in. It's a wet noodle fight. Yep. Not a lot of armor yet for Soul, actually. He went for the Catalyst and is only now starting to build armor items. And mm -hmm. Amaran's doing some pretty good mixed damage with that Trinity Force right now. Yeah, and it looks like, it almost seems like Marn is looking to go into the Blade of the Ruin King. He just wants to be a big split pushing threat <laughs> in the top lane. I think that's exactly right. And if we look at these two compositions, Spenu definitely has the better 5v5 in the late game. Uh, a lot more reliable damage coming out of... Oh, jeez. Okay, catch. This is going to be the end. Yes. Goodbye. And he gets the Krug. That's just, taking everything. That just adds insult to injury. You die right there as a juggler. You watch this Fizz just come in style on you. And then <laughs> you have to watch him take your jungle afterwards, the humiliation. Well, Wolf is there just to keep Soul away from the tower and zone him off so they can take this turret. Baker just body blocking the minion wave. And Ooh. there we go. Bengi actually finds Sasa around the side. Sasa getting very low. Bengi just going to come in over the wall, and that's it. Right there, flashes over the Emperor's Divide, and the Lantern just a hair too late oh, from Secret. Sasa tried to kind of lock himself in in that pit to take out Bengi, because there was no way Bengi was going to get over that uh, wall without his, with his phase dive already down. But there was just that tiny, tiny gap for him to go around. Yeah, so now the siege really going down. There's the two turrets, three turrets on one push from SKT after those kills. Faker going to get grabbed, but that's not very much. Faker using his heal right there just as a precaution. But two turrets in mid, one turret in top, and this is the explosiveness of SK Telecom. You give them a window, and we saw this against Janair. Janair was handily winning their game two. Yeah. It was not a close game. Jinair made one mistake that Faker turned around, and that was it. The rest of the team managed to follow up really well. There is going to be a stun on to catch. Bengi does not have ult or flash. He is going to die. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Or is he? Yes. Yeah, he dies. <laughs> it looked like his pat the speed buff from his passive would have gotten him out a little bit, but not quite enough. Not quite enough. Do you know that Echo is really the only character who it makes sense that he actually comes back to life in yeah. this game after you die? Maybe eh, Zillion. Technically, it doesn't make sense because Echo has to be alive to activate his machine. But he does when he dies. Does he? His death animation is his, his activating his machine. Oh, is it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not know that. Yes. Well, <laughs> today I learned. <laughs> the more you know. You know, it must be really horrible to be in Summoner's Rift because you're just immortal. You're, it's basically like, uh-oh, uh -oh, here we go. We go. And they're coming in from the side. Catch already chunked out. Wow, that was a curved flag drag. <laughs> Thanks, Sue. The headbutt. Well, oh. SKT still on the hunt. Everyone from Spenu running down to the bottom side, but they are going to get cut off. Maokai could teleport if they knew Morin was there. Uh, they see everyone right now. They're trying to run and get out, and they are going to have to use that TP right away. Wolf gets grabbed. Wolf has his ultimate. Everyone else there to follow up if necessary, so Spenu can't commit to this. They have to lose the blue. 
and most likely the Dragon, which is coming up in 15 seconds as well. Yeah, they were led on a nice berry chase there. So SKT comes out even further ahead. See, being in Summoner's Rift is a lot like being in Valhalla, which is, of course, <laughs> the Viking afterlife, where basically you just drink booze. You, dr you just drink mead, and then in a big hall, with the gods, and then you go outside and you fight until you all die, and then you resurrect, and then you go back in and drink some more. So, I have to imagine that Summoner's Rift has yeah. some sort of, but at the same time, it's kind of a horror of undeath where you can never actually end. Your existence can never end, no matter how much well, misery is involved in constant combat. So here's my theory now. You know how like they disassociated the whole like Summoner's Rift with the whole lore of League of Legends, right? So. Summoner's Rift is the Valhalla for everybody in Runeterra. And they, you know, all these champions, they die, they go to the afterlife, and they just are eternally fighting at the whims of professional teams. <laughs> okay, so we nailed it. Now, finally, we actually have some lore that makes sense for Riot to use. Oh, That's man. also why you get resurrected in the game, because uh, you're already dead. Riot Games, I accept check or cash. <laughs> just mail it to me in Korea. All right, well, why don't you give him your address on screen here, Barry? No, oh, I'm not that <laughs> dumb. All right, well, Marn, split pushing, merrily. I don't think so. Oh, well, okay. I think you could just taking all the damage and just taking that tower. Well, a little, little dangerous, uh, even though he does have one million wards to protect his split push. Just total vision control for SK Telecom in the top side. Bengi uses his ult just to skedaddle away quickly. It's actually do. interesting because Bengi is just using that, using his ult for like vision. He goes in, gets vision. He's like, oh, there's two people about to clap. Ult immediately. Yeah, we've seen some much more interesting uses of Echo's ult in the last few weeks. I mean, it was fun to see Kuro just use Echo as a fast push champion and yeah. just come back to lane and just push, basically push, push. auto the tower down uh, while his opponent was also recalling. So he was able to get a pretty fast mid lane turret as a result of those actions. And now, like you're saying, uh, Bengi not shy about using that ult just to get out of hairy situations. Catch actually got stunned by that on the other side of the yeah. wall. <laughs> Interesting interaction. And SKT turning their eyes towards Baron at the moment. They don't have a lot of pink wards. And then they're probably just baiting or just trying to get vision. We'll see Baker heading into the top lane to catch that farm. A little bit of farm that is there. Marn gonna push and hopefully get that tower eventually. Yeah, he's starting to get a huge CS lead compared to Soul. Yeah. Oh, just the, the farm across the board, with the exception of Faker, is up in the favor of SK Telecom, just catching a lot more of those minion waves. Marin <laughs> going for that pure damage fizz build. Bit risky in a 5v5, but at the same time, they do have a substantial gold lead. Who's going to stop Marn? He's 301. He has a Triforce. He has the Blade of the Ruined King. This is probably Spender's best choice. This is actually a very good Baron attempt. And Wolf's going to have to face check this one. He's going to see it, actually, in the end. But Zasa trying to it? poke over the wall. There are all five of them there. And Baker what are they going to do? In. There's no TP. That's it. Spender's going to get it. Well played by Spender Sonic Boom. And they're going to flash out in the end using the range on the Azir and also uh, what we saw there was the lantern used to get it over the pit. Marn going to split push as much as he can before these members come back. He's not going to get that inhibitor turret. Well, we'll see if Marn decides to go into more bruisery build from here on out. Um, but, I mean, he's sitting pretty. There's no, no one can 1v1 him. They have to commit at least two people. And if they commit two people, then SKT is just going to walk over the rest of your turrets. The rest of SKT will, rather. Yeah. Bengi gets caught. Bengi gets caught. Does take a lot of poke damage. Catch comes over the wall, though. They're kind of committing to this one. Bengi is still relatively healthy. And a parallel convergence on top of himself. He's just buying time for Bang to get there before popping out. And the end. So SKT continuing to play aggressively, even though the enemy team has Baron. Marin on another split pushing mission right now as he's going to catch that very large wave in the top side. But there's really nothing Spenu can do with this Baron. There, there's no lane that is ripe for pushing at the moment. Yeah. I mean, the most they could get maybe is the bottom lane turret. I think it was less than half health when we last saw it. But SKT has good wards. They're not letting them pass the river. And Marin applying pressure in the top lane now. 
Yep, just going straight on through. So we see the Glacial Shroud, so he's probably going into a Frozen Heart next, which is great. CDR is Biz's best friend. Yeah, that, that's going to make him extremely durable uh, compared when against the Sivir, rather, and also Smenu. Yeah, they still have a superior team composition in the late game. That is, that is definitely true. pretty much unquestionable as long as they can force a 5v5 engagement. And they have bought themselves some more time to get there. Magic resist going to be a big factor. SKT very vulnerable to uh, MR stacking because Marin just isn't tanky right now, which means that he's going to be very easy to kill in team fights. Ooh, SKT is maybe getting flanked here. Baker flashes out. Ah, catch wow, ultimate. catch going very deep. There's actually a Baker going to go down to Sauce, and they've caught Wolf also. There was a TP into the Jarvan pit during that fight, so two for zero in favor of Svenu as they really commit. Nicely done. Baker got deleted in that one. Well, it was a 5v2. Yeah. That was a good call from Ketch. Ketch actually used his Jarvan ult and then dropped a ward in the pit so that Soul could get there. So now Spenu really starting to capitalize on this Baron buff. SKT pushed back to the brink right now. They, they might be able to get this inhibitor turret. I don't think they can get the inhibitor, but the inhibitor turret is probably something they can do. See how fast they can push forward. Wolf is back up right now. How much do they want to commit? There's the fish down onto Secret. Secret gonna get knocked up. Bar into the middle of the fight. Has to flash out. He's a little bit vulnerable. He's still on the perimeter. Bang actually pulls Soul over the wall with him. And Marin on the way through. Double kill for Baker's him. Baker's alive again. Baker's alive. There's the Q. Sasin just bends his sand soldiers through the wall. Marin still going after nuclear spell shield down. Now he's just going to use a heal, summoner heal from Bang oh, whoa. to secure that oh. kill. That'll be enough with the damage over time. And Wolf finds Sasin and knocks him into a wall. Wolf has to run. Bang there. Bang gets him with the phosphorus bomb. Bang doesn't even have to flash to finish up that kill. And now that is Spenu overstaying their welcome. They had, they got the turret, and then they tried to get the inhibitor, yeah. and that was just a step too far. Might have been a little bit of desperation playing at Spenu. They had some, of, they saw a window, and they tried to get as much as they could out of it, but they just bit off more than they could chew. And now Faker has the Lich Bane, of course, an item that. He started building on Victor this season that's been taken up by a lot of other pro players. Just the mobility that it gets you is pretty ridiculous. Going for the home guard enchant this time just to get out of base during that very yeah. scary siege. The possible 1-3-1 one, one from SKT is quite high. Mainly, mainly because you have three Sheen items across, you know, you have Bang with his Triforce, you have Amon with his Triforce, then you have uh, Faker with his Lich Bane. So, they could go for a 4-1 or 1-3-1, depends on what they're feeling uh, safer with. But it just really depends on how hard Spenu can just find them out of position. Well, that is, yeah. And with the ward coverage that SKT has had this game, that is getting pretty difficult. And you, they may have gotten a Baron, but there's still three dragons in the hole, and there's still nearly 10K behind. So, I mean, Spenu. It was a nice, it was a nice sneak of that Baron. SKT definitely didn't respect their ability to do it. It was a good shot call from Spenu to know that they had so many champions that could get over the wall to provide that damage. Definitely. But here we go. Now here they go on to Marin. Marin has no flash, remember. So that's going to be a playful trickster. He's going to get under the turret. That turret has nearly no health. But well, playful trickster is almost up, and I think Spenu knew that as well. So they decided to back off and not give up the mid lane inhibitor. But, well, but is that true? I mean, yeah, that's it's gonna be the big question here is how fast Bang can push this before people get back. He's certainly gonna get a decent amount of damage down with that Sheen and see it nearly falls. So the cost of that attempted gank, now they got the top turret by pushing out the wave. It was just hanging by a thread. Oh, but that is, that is definitely, well, now Marn, Marn in the bottom lane catching that big, big wave, pushing towards that tier one there. So, Faker farming the jungle. Not sure why Faker needs to be doing this right now, but... <laughs> He's got to keep his GPM up. Don't need to be taking Gromp right now. Or, or Scuttle Crab, there's no reason. Dragon is not going to come up for another few minutes. And that is 
a little bit of a lack of pressure on the map right now, especially when Faker can just siege so effectively with this Victor. Yeah, and okay, Spenny sends two people to deal with Marn, possibly three. SKT, meanwhile, in the middle. And they seem reluctant to com uh, commit to the split push right now. Yeah, a bit strange, actually. Maybe they just really want to go for this Baron. There aren't any Spenu wards that can really detect whether or not they're doing it. And SKT can certainly do the Baron insanely fast with this composition. They have two Blades of the Ruin King. Yeah, so and A ton of damage onto that monster. And here we go. Ward dropped over the pit. Quickly cleared out. Marin looking to change his split push up into the mid lane. He actually is going to find that pink ward, and Soul just not going to go on to him. Well, Spenu, a little bit afraid of the Baron right now. They play some wards and then back off immediately. Yeah, they, I mean, they have to be very afraid of the Baron, but SKT going back on a shopping trip while Marin continues to press forward. Getting tankier by the minute. There he goes, on to Soul. Soul taking just a wow. huge amount of damage. Marin is now plat past the Flame Horizon, 100 CS, <laughs> over his top lane opponent. Yeah, and I wonder what item he's going to go next. He has that Negatron Cloak. Is he trying to go for a Guardian Angel or maybe a QS, uh, Mercurial Scimitar? Wow, Marin just can't be stopped right now. Uh, Soul just doesn't oh do my. enough damage, and he just gets a fish tossed on top of him. And now Soul in a big world of hurt. There's the urgent strike going forward, and Martin's going to tank both towers easily. And is that the inhibitor? Nope. Martin's going to teleport. Oh, he doesn't get it. It's canceled. And there's a fight with Sasa going down. Oh. He's going to strike through. Sasa has to use his heal. Is that going to oh be a Marin? Is super fed. And that is going to result in him solo killing both Soul and Sausin and taking an inhibitor turret and taking the inhibitor. Marin's this play is actually really good. He's dodging a lot of spells with this Urchin Strike. He knows exactly when and where to use it. Yeah, he's got the cooldowns really uh, well memorized of his opponent's abilities just so he can outplay them on this champion. It definitely has been quite impressive to watch. Yeah, that's the second inhibitor that'll go down for Spen and Sonic Boom, and SKT is sitting pretty. Oh, yeah. Speaker has to flash. He was afraid of the remaining damage coming in from Faker. Faker able to chase very well with this Lich Bane, and that's going to be it. Soul gets caught and punted right out, just chain CC, and there, catch going to go in. That is not going to be enough damage as we have Bang mercilessly pushing down the turret. Marin has the GA now, so he's going to try and get some style wow. points. Just crushes Secret behind the Nexus, and that'll be it. Oh, whoa. Big ult, but it's not going to be enough as they're going to kill Sivir and then turn on to the Nexus at the end. Bang goes down with a double kill for Marin, but that is it. So very one-sided game, except for Spedu extending it by a hair, taking that Sneak Baron. It was a good call, Yeah, but that level one put them in a big, big hole. Yeah, Marin was just so dominant on Fizz, like in the mid to late game. Especially that 2v1 and at the bottom inhibitor. That was, I thought he was dead for sure. I mean, even that tower dive that he did solo onto the Maokai was yeah. extremely impressive. I mean, I did not expect Marin to deliver this kind of Fizz performance. Yes, he was, he was playing against the last place team in the league, but that was some seriously good Fizz. That is, that is very good indeed. And yeah, what, you know, spend a Sonic Boom, back to the drawing board. What do they do? There's just too many things to ban. Um, you know, what can you do as a bottom tier team? Going straight with the same players, and we're in picks and bans for game two, and Evelyn banned right out the gate. Yeah, that's a bit interesting. Now, Spendu did ban Evelyn in the first game, and so it will be the Callista taken out right away by SK Telecom. Are we going to have those three jungle bans again, where we have to go on a sort of secondary junglers like Jarvan and Echo? I think well. we will. I think we will, Barry. Let's see what Spenu bans here. They're thinking about it. Yeah, it's taking a long time for them to decide to ban Rek'Sai, which is... Not surprising. Not surprising at all, because they want to get that first pick. Gragas doubt 
that SKT is going to let them have that one. They have to be a bit concerned about the rise. Also, so is that going to be the pick that manages to make it through the draft? I can see SKT leaving up the rise and then picking something to just kill it over and over again. Maybe like with the Maokai and that combo we saw yesterday, the Maokai uh, Nidalee combo or some I don't other think, version. I don't think Nidalee is going to be played by Benki. Well, just, yeah. Just, just my Just my a sense. hunch. Just a hunch. <laughs> well, Gragas is the next ban. But Benki still plays Lee Sin, so you could yes. just very well go for a Maokai Lee Sin and do the same thing. Yes, you could. So... Finally, what will it be last here? The Nautilus Annie. Or the Annie? Okay, so. Interesting. We actually saw Annie not picked at all in the last game, a bit of a rarity in terms of Korea these days, where it usually goes in the first round of the draft on the red side. Yeah, a lot of teams valuing that instant stun with the uh, with the Annie ultimate, and Nautilus is, will be the last man for SK Telecom. So rise up, Alistair up. So many choices. If I'm Spenu, I'm not picking Rise. Yeah, they probably, like, SKT would be the team to know how to camp that Rise and just snowball off that top Yeah, lane. I would be extremely worried about picking Rise, and I would just take the safe pick, which is the Alistair here. Keep yeah. it out of Wolf's hands, give you something to dive turrets with, something that if you're caught out, you could break the CC and walk away without dying. I definitely take Alistair if I'm Spenu. Would Spenu also maybe want to take the Sivir here as well? Uh, well, they're thinking about it. They have 15 seconds to lock in a pick. No hovers. Yeah, this is uh, it's definitely a rough choice for them, but I think that is the right one if you want to play conservatively. And that'll be a, an Azir Ooh. locked in instantly, not normally a champion that we think of with Faker, of course, Easy Hoon. Generally considered the better Azir player between the two. But Faker's still no slouch on Azir. No, definitely not a slouch. But is he at Easy Hoon Coco levels? We actually yeah. haven't seen him play it in a while, so yeah. he perhaps has gotten better. But I would say that he is not quite as impressive as either one of those players from what we've seen to date. Is he going to go on that Fizz again? I don't think you pick the Fizz right now. Yeah. That would be a bit presumptuous. That would be quite bold of SK Telecom blind picking both of their solo lanes. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's a good idea. They're going to play Janna, so it looks like they're going to be playing a disengaged composition. I really wouldn't be surprising to see Tristana come in here, considering SK Telecom's recent picks. We uh, might also see a Rumble or a Maokai from the top lane, most likely, I would feel. I would see, it depends on what they want their AD carry to be. We could see Kog'Ma here, mm. because remember that a lot of teams are now starting to play more and more with that Kog'Ma. Uh, again, Samsung played it, yeah. uh, KT played it. So this is a champion that is working better as long as you have the peel for it. And Janna, fantastic at peeling, so. And Janna Kogma is also very strong in lane yeah. against most AD carries, especially against somebody with low range like Sivir. You can get that poke in the 2v2 and really hurt her, so. Lee Sin may be a possible pickup, or will they take the rise here? I think that this is, and SKT, what they're going to do is just play Kite. They know that Spenu wants to take the rise, and the yeah. rise is going to be locked in. Now, they do have solid engage with the sivir Alistair combo, now the question is, is this rise a mid lane rise or a top lane rise? Because no, we still don't know exactly what Spenu might be planning here. They might be trying to do something tricky, maybe try to bait a top lane pick here and then counter pick it. Now, I think right here you just take Maokai and then you take your jungler, whatever that's going to be. Echo would be perfectly fine mm -hmm. uh, because you have more ways to prevent people from getting into the mix. Uh, or you could just take Corky and go for this. I was going to say Maokai Echo, last pick your AD carry, and see if you can get away with the Kog'Maw. Yeah. And then if you get a Nunu on top of that for Azure Jungle, maybe, maybe the Nunu instead of the Echo, if you have a Kog'Maw, that could be very good as well. Yeah, and you already have the Azir for the Blood Boil. Ooh. Olaf? Olaf Jungle? Bengi has played it in the past. Yep, it will be. And that's been something that, of course, Fnatic has been playing with increasing frequency. We've seen it in both LCS regions. Yes. So, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of picking Olaf this early, 
but against the Rise, there's not going to be yeah. much that Rise can do to stop him from just getting on top of Rise and dealing a bunch of true damage. So it seems like this is a premeditated uh, a counter pick towards just the Rise, just to get on him with your ultimate up and just wail on him before he can even like do significant enough damage to stop the Olaf. Yeah, also it explains the early Azir pick because mm -hmm. Uh, Azir is a champion that, yeah, Olaf, if the wall is in movement in its knockback phase, Olaf can walk through it. But once the wall stops moving, Olaf can no longer get through the wall, uh -huh. even if he's using Ragnarok. So I think Azir is generally a good pick against jungle Olaf these days. Uh, and also, that means he's not going to have to peel with the Olaf Ooh, edit. We see the Vel'Koz. Sasson has been playing Vel'Koz in solo queue. Yeah, and also, I have to point out, Velkaz, this is the first professional Velkaz pick since I believe April of 2014. Yeah. So it's been more than a year since anyone in any region professionally has played Velkaz. And even then it was mainly in support, I think. Yes. So we'll see a Velkaz mid with a rise top, most likely. <laughs> well, this is wacky. I like the Jarvan pick here, though, because if the Olaf gets going, then Jarvan can just ultimate on top of him and draw a flag out, and that'll keep the, the Olaf bottled inside of his ultimate. Wow, we have a lot to talk about, Barry. There's also a Mundo in this game now, so Maokai just falls all the way through the draft, and the Mundo comes in. Mundo very good against double AP compositions, and with the Azir wall, they're actually going to have a way to peel for the AD carry since they have Azir and Janna, while Mundo and Olaf go deep into the enemy line. And remember, Velkos and Rise, they don't have a lot of mobility. Yeah. Mundo and Olaf are going to do work against those champions. I don't even know why you would pick Velkos if you saw an Olaf and the enemy team. Yeah. You don't have, you're not even going to be tanky like Rise is. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get a Rod of Ages, I don't think. He might. No, no, you would not. Maybe. He might be going no. for like some like weird Rylai's Leandry build to go for like a slow burn. I don't know. Possible. Okay, I'll give you that. Maybe. 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 But that is still kind of wacky. I mean, obviously, it's a very wacky game that we have to deal with right now. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a Smite Teleport Mundo. We have a Cinder Hulk top lane Mundo in this game. It was only a matter of time, wasn't it, till Mundo, the natural jungler, came into this meta and started running that smite. We've seen it before, but it hasn't been that popular. Well, guys, it's going to be a wild one. Let's get into game two. SKT versus Spenu. Spenu fans coming out today. Yep. Can they make this mid Velkaz work? I would be terrified to play this Velkaz <laughs> against a ghosting Olaf, but they apparently have no qualms. Barn standing in the tri brush. Barn gonna have to run out of that. He's gonna get rune prison, but there's no follow up. Uh, Secret has to flash pull if they wanted to follow up on that. Really. Not great for your lane phase as Rise to start with your W prison. It's not the worst thing ever, though. It really, right. It's not going to make that big of a deal. Well, for the Mundo matchup, you'd want to start your E just because you can constantly just poke harass while CSing at the same time with your E. It's just how you play the Rise against these uh, melee champions of top lane. But W, not so ideal. <laughs> Indeed. Well, he gets some wards down here. They're going to see Bengi. Not with a lot of mana anymore, using up most of that, so he's going to have to probably recall before he actually starts jungling, but it's like that's not going to be the case. He's going to go in with having used his mana on all his axes early mm -hmm. and start jungling right at his blue buff, so he'll solve the problem that way. Still deep wards in from SK Telecom, that same ward formation for Spenu, but this time they're not actually going to be going for that red buff. They did see... Bengi lurking around there, and I think they still have some pretty bad memories of what happened in game one when they were collapsed on by SKT. Yeah, and a machete start for Marin. Interesting. Well, it looks like he's going to be doing some jungling early, actually. Started over there at the Raptors and is now heading over to the Krugs. So, interesting. Interesting strategy from SKT. Yeah. Not sure how seriously I should take this because they're playing against <laughs> Spedu, so I don't know if they're 
the styling. Yeah, why why would you show something that you think is particularly strong in this situation? But Marin just gonna get the last cleaver, kill onto the Krugs, and then head straight into lane apparently. I guess I mean he has five pots, so why not? Uh, burn that last potion and then walk into lane. Rises level two, though, from his own trip through the jungle. Well, he can see us fairly safely from range with his cleavers. Yeah, I gotta use up more of his HP to do that. Well, you get a refund once you get a kill with it, so. As long as you do it perfectly. Bengi keeping himself a little bit on the lower side to get that extra attack speed. And threw that axe really far away. <laughs> okay. How does Korean Broloff sound? That's what I want to know. The people want to know what... I've actually never played with that skin. I don't play a lot of Olaf at all, so... <laughs> I don't know, man. I, your guess is as good as mine at this point. I don't know if Korea really has that archetype, that male archetype... They don't. ...culturally, so, so that's why I'm curious. The name of the skin itself, it's called Broloff in English, but in Korean it's written as a Hyungshi Olaf, which means Mr. Bro Olaf. <laughs> So it's a little odd. Ooh, Sasin gets good damage on Faker. Activates his passive. And yeah, it's it's an interesting we're gonna translation. Have to go, we're going to have to go on YouTube later and listen to the Korean voiceover so we can actually find out what they say. Because <laughs> I'm like, now I'm really curious, Barry. The, I bet he just says bro Masio, like <laughs> literally word for word. I don't even know, man. It's all right. We will, we will unpack this mystery. Mm. But meanwhile, we're going to see if Bengi makes it to the top lane. The uh, ward just ran out. Bengi knew the ward just ran out, too. So he's going to come up here. Can he get an axe down? There's a lot of chain slows. He's going to get one. It's not really going to be enough. It's a little bit of harassment right there. Has to back off in the minion wave. He took a lot of damage from that, too. So no flash. Took a lot of damage. Maybe not that worth it. Well. He's got, oh wow, wow, Faker getting harassed here by Sasin. It's knocked up. I, and that is one thing that has impressed me about Sasin is the size of this guy's champion pool is actually pretty impressive. He's He really has been able to play a variety of roles for this Spenu team this season. And he's laning quite well against Faker's Azir as well on Velka. So putting down the harass, Faker's out of mana while Sasin still has about a quarter of his mana left. So we'll see if he can. Yeah, and CSing very well too. He's up here. Six. He's here to make Velkaz look good. And yeah. there's an eyeball coming out the top, flying away. <laughs> I didn't even know that skin did that. I've never even seen that skin. I haven't seen Velkaz in a very long time either, so <laughs> I think the last time I saw is when I got totally rocked in solo queue by support Velkaz. Did more damage than the entire entire team. Yeah, I believe Scary. that. I've seen, I remember when uh, Zero used to play support mm. Velkaz a while back. It was one of his pocket picks. I'm thinking it'd be sad that there are no more wolves. They were taken earlier by catch on the invade. And then everyone just going to recall here. So, Spenu, how do they keep this Rise and this Velkaz safe against the Mundo? They, do they even have enough damage to deal with the late game Mundo? Well, if even and on top of that, if that Mundo goes a Skirmisher Saber, how are they going to kill him while that buff is up? You mean when that Mundo goes a goes yeah. Skirmisher Saber? They're going double Saber here against this low mobility double AP composition. Sure, they have the Sivir ultimate, but the Ghost with Olaf going to be pretty difficult to stop. And On top of that, that little speed, boof, uh, speed bus, uh, boost you get right with his ultimate, too. Yeah, it's, it's going to be rough. So this is definitely a, a difficult composition to play into an Olaf Mundo combination. Even if you manage to make it the latest game, the only Mundo we've actually seen this season so far has been Lilacs on Incredible <laughs> Miracle, and um, wow, Sasin. That didn't go well, actually. I, you'll be surprised to know. Yeah, Sasin's ultimate is down. Faker is low and forced to recall, so he's going to lose even more CS. Sasin is going to be up around 10 CS, but Faker decides to stay. Yeah, I mean, Velka's in the lane hasn't really been the issue yeah. with Velkaz. I mean, we talk about why he hasn't been seen. It's because he's really squishy. Mm -hmm. He's super easy to kill uh, because he doesn't really have a large amount of self-peel. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, his and, ratios aren't that high either. Yes, his ratios aren't that high. He is utterly reliant on proccing his passive to do damage. That's yeah. that's probably the biggest problem with him, is that he just doesn't scale well, and he doesn't have reliable damage. If you get the passive, yeah, you can do a lot. But all but, three of his abilities are skill shots. Yes, yes. So it becomes really problematic to play the Vel'Koz, um, especially if you're trying to kite or something like that and get your passive down. It's, it's very hard. Definitely, and it looks like he may be going for either an Athene's or a Lanomicon first. Smart choice, get that CDR, sling a lot more spells. And yeah, we have double skirmisher sabers from SK Telecom T1. It's like a bit of a delay though on the Cinder Hulk. Marin just wanting to get as much MR as he can for this rise in the laning phase. Soul gonna be delayed a little bit in terms of his itemization. Has to get that tier and then into the catalyst. Marin actually beating Soul pretty significantly in terms of CS. Yeah, and also our observer just pointed out this is an ancient coin. Alistar, rather than the Relic Shield. Uh, it did get buffs mm -hmm. recently. Uh, not sure about the coin, but if you're pretty confident that you're not going to be able to get into the wave against a Corky and a Janna, then maybe that does make a bit of a difference. And also, Alistar, you know, that gives him yet another engage tool. Yes. And he is, he is kind of needed for engage with this composition, and he's going to synergize well with catch there, that item. I think it's something that could be punished in the laning phase, but if you really want to just play passive and spam your roar and just heal and stand there and just collect passive gold, it could be good. And doing oh. some damage again. See Half that? Of his health gone right there. Yeah, you see that passive proc and how much of a chunk it does take out. Faker has to down his last potion. Faker's still hanging in there. And he's down. Oh! Wow, Faker really going in. He's actually on the opposite side. He's just going to die. Wow, first blood to Saucen. Yeah, that is not a good sign. Faker coming in, but did not respect where Ketch could be on the map right there. Ketch just ready to follow up immediately, and the Emperor's Divide can't stop the kill from going down, even though Wolf was already on his way and had used his exhaust. Yeah, and if Saucen can get ahead a little bit, and maybe get his Morale Anomicon earlier than Faker's Morale Anomicon, then that could spell trouble for Faker and Lane. Yeah, it could. So Spenu wants to turn this into a dragon. Doesn't seem like there's a lot that SKT could do. They are going to fall behind at the dragon count early. First one will go over. Bang. It's knocked up. And tries to get a Phosphorus Bomb. Just going to do a little bit of poke damage, but they can't commit. Bengi not going to be able to clear that ward as Secret bounces him up or we can get that final hit, and Faker now back in lane, but they have a hard time for SKT. They're down a dragon, down 500 gold now. Sawson curving the Q around the minions to hit Faker. Always a good time mm. with Belkaz. All right. I'm actually curious to see if Sawson's maxing his Q or his W first. There's different schools of thought on mid lane Velkaz. The W gives you much superior wave clear to constantly keep shoving um, shoving the wave. The Q is much better if you're more about poking and harassing. So I'm actually very curious to see what he's uh, maxing first. Yeah, well, we keep an eye on it next time he goes through. Now the counter jungling has begun as Soul recalls and Marin goes back to pick up that Gromp buff with the takeaway, and that is the make it a little bit harder for Soul to lane against him mm -hmm. and give him that extra gold. So, you know, the nice thing about having this Mundo into the rise, especially with the uh, the Machete and the Smite, is that rise takes so long to ramp up that you actually have a lot of freedom in terms of jungle invading to really, right. really snowball while rise is weak. Yeah. And, you know, even though he's up 20 CS, it's probably the gold difference is probably even a little bit higher than that. what that is, what that represents currently, mainly because of the early Hunter's Machete as well. Yeah, that is going to probably be a big difference as we hit maybe the 20, 30 minute mark just in terms of gold between these two top laners. And now, Faker there in the mid lane, just clearing things out. Saucen continuing to have a small CS advantage, but got that kill. So he does get the Morello Nomicon first, and he does have that edge. 
So, Sassen really doing well today against Faker in spite of some adverse conditions in game one, really turning it around mm -hmm. uh, with the help of Catch. So the focus on Faker has been helpful to keep Spenu in these games. Yeah, and he is maxing his W, in fact. He just wants to match Faker's wave clear with his own. So, so he's going to be a little bit lacking in the damage territory unless he lands both uh, procs of his W and gets a passive as well, so. Yeah, that's going to be a little rough to do. Has to have very good placement on that ability. But that wave clear is, is pretty nice, got to say. I do. I will say it, Barry. That wave clear is pretty <laughs> nice. Oh, blue buff was handed over. We have Soul with not much mana being aggressed on, but nobody decides to take anything further. So, bit of a lull now. As usual, I mean, the we have a lot of champions that need time to scale in this game. SKT wants to play late when this double AP composition is not going to have answers. Oh, good damage. To the but. tanks that they have. And I love how Sasan is so freely just throwing out his ultimate. And it's on a very low cooldown as well. So, and it's slow, so it's actually, you know, might as well just use it to gain more dominance in lane. You know, build that CS lead. Keep Faker going back home. Like, don't let him roam. Yeah, well, it's uh, proving quite successful to this point. Faker actually just going back for the Wolves, and he's happy to farm under the turret at this point in time. But it has been a pretty methodical push forward by Sasen. And look at this. Olaf has been waiting in the top lane forever right now. Here yeah. we go. And there's Sol. Gets yeah. knocked around just a little bit. True damage goes down, but they are not going to be they're able to. They're actually to just going to dive this bar, and I don't think you can do that. No, uh, they have to back off. Way too dangerous to dive in that situation. Beggy's ult was on its way down. Beggy actually going a little early there. He had been waiting in that river brush for an extended period for Marin just to come back. Yeah, it seems a little odd to try to gank then because Marin's ultimate was down at the time anyways. And Sasan's ultimate is almost back up, so if Faker decides to stay any longer, he might get destroyed by the Disintegration Ray. Well, and wisely heads back. Marin again on the jungle invade. Oh, Faker's still here. If Sasan lands one ability, he's going to go all in on Faker. <laughs> yeah, they, he's got well, that go. flash up. There you go. Faker oh. has to pop out, uses the heal. Uh, yes, he... Playing with fire, but Sasan getting the necessary chip damage onto the turret. Faker getting very low. Well played by Sasan, indeed. Sasan definitely showing us something I didn't know about Velkos today. Quite the lane bully. Quite the lane bully. Marin completes a Cinder Hulk in the top side with that back. Doesn't have to use the teleport. Bengi there, just clearing out the minions in the mid lane. So we have two Cinder Hulks on SK Telecom T1. Sivir is definitely going to have to get a Blade of the Ruin King this game. <laughs> yeah, that is certainly going to be a prerequisite to uh, Spenu victory. Secret knocks Bengi out. Catch still there doing the Raptors. Catch does have the Smite. Smite War is won by Bengi. And I like Sasan's build. He's going to build into that Leandri's Torment to add even more of that um, the percent health damage to his abilities. And two of his, three of his four abilities, in fact, have some form of disable. So he will get that four, full 4% four burn. Yeah, if he can actually land him. Land him. That's going to be what we have to watch out for here. But so far, he's been doing quite well. Uh, SKT has the position. Onto the dragon. Do they want to do this? Soul is in a major power drop right here. Has not even finished his Rod of Ages, and he has that tier, so they're just going to try and steal it with the Boomerang Blade. That is not going to work. Bengi securing SK Telecom's first dragon. We are pretty much identical in terms of gold. Marin just going to get some more hits down onto the turret. Soul. Actually, Marin takes a little bit of damage right there from the turret, but still healing up a storm. Well, he sees that Soul is very low on mana, so even if he procs that passive, he can't get that full chain snare anyways because he's out of mana. So Marin just trying to get as much damage onto the turret, like you said. And he might get it if, if Soul doesn't TP back after his recall. Well, it's a bit of a race right now between who can get the tower first. Will Sasen be able to take out Faker's turret in the mid lane? 
Or is Marin going to grab the one of Sol up top? Looks like Sol is going to lose his turret first. I guess he didn't want to teleport and give Marin the teleport advantage, so at least he can match the teleport for teleport right now. But Sasen just CSing slowly. And oh! Nice play. Faker gets incredibly low, but it's not going to be enough to kill him. That was just such barely. a good play. So he shot the Q into the brush. And managed to hit Faker with it. Faker still backing out. The turret goes down, but great play on the side there from Sasen. Faker thought he could play a little bit aggressively. Sasen was kind of zoning himself out right there by coming over, but he looks very strong in the laning phase on this Velkaz. Well played indeed by Sasen. It would have just been the icing, the cherry on top, if he had gotten that kill, but the they get that turret. The first time we've seen Velkaz in forever, and then solo kill solo Faker. Kill Faker with it. Well, yes, that would, be, that would be pretty impressive. It's already impressive what he's managed to accomplish. Yeah. But the big problem, though, is once laning phase breaks, can Spenu Sonic Boom keep both of their carries alive? And can they do damage yeah. against this Mundo that has had a lot of farm already and is now benefiting from so much additional gold uh, via the Skirmisher Saber? And you also have to, how are you even going to do damage to them when they have two Sabers on your primary carries? So we're very troubling situation for Spenu. Definitely. Well, we'll see how long uh, Spenu wants to keep this laning phase going because it looks like it's not going to be in their favor if they break it any later. But mid lane turret is down. Oh. Are they going to go for this? No, just a ward into the brush to deter. Axe goes the other way to make sure Catch isn't going to go in. And Deep invades on both sides. Yeah. Well, looks like it's gonna be one of those games with a 20 minute laning phase. Yeah, well, it's a lot of, again, there's a lot of scaling that needs to be done here. Well, we'll see what the item buys on Spenu Sonic Boom are to kind of answer these mega tanks. Gromp Wars. Yeah. Easily won by Varian with that spike. Now Ooh, secret, secret taking a huge amount of damage during this Trinity Force power spike. Bang just gonna Valk right out the other way, but good poke, will this mean a possible bottom lane turret? They can absolutely dive onto the Sivir if everybody leaves, and that's what she's gonna do. Bengi's there waiting in the tri brush. And there's a pink ward going down. They're gonna just get more wards into the bottom side, so Faker is safe too as he starts to push forward. But that little damage done by Bang after he gets his Trinity Force and his Cutlass means that there's gonna be another turret and a gold lead for SKT. Now Spenu has to make a move somewhere. They're gonna to have to make an aggressive play somewhere in order to keep SKT on the back foot or put them rather, put them on the back foot. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's a tough situation to be in for Spenu right now because yeah. you're so scared of moving forward when your back line is vulnerable. They can play safely in the mid lane, but that's about it. This Rise really in a lot of trouble. He continues to get denied more and more and more by this Mundo. You know, now that I think about it, rather than the heal, would it have been better to take the Ghost on the Velkaz? Yeah, I mean, I absolutely, I think, actually, in this composition, he hasn't had much cause to use the heal yet because if he picked the Velkos, he must be confident in it in his laning matchup against Azir. Ooh, SK Telecom going for the Baron. Uh -oh. They suspect it. Yep, the pings are starting to go down right now. Are they going to be able to do it in time? Baron still has his, uh oh, will have his ultimate back up soon. That's going to be a Baron, though, oh, dear. in exchange for the turret. So SKT says, Guys snuck one last game. It's ours this time. 21 minute Baron. 21 minutes in and Marn is level 15. That is absolutely crazy. For that him is to be that nuts. high level right now, but he keeps on farming out his and the enemy jungle. He has spear fist. He's, he's not even going back. He just tanked an entire Baron in 21 minutes and he wants to keep on rolling. His now Sol is gonna go up his side. There's his ultimate. He still gets locked down. I don't know if you're gonna get on this one, Baron. Oh. You're not. Overconfidence. Paid for his hu hubris right there. Yeah, that's actually a very important kill for Sol, who gets it due to the low HP when it's not even really 
him in his prime yet, still waiting for that Rod of Ages to stack. Well, Soul pushing up, trying to get some damage, maybe take that top lane turret, and I think Spenu might, will probably be able to get it here. Now, what I'm really worried about for Spenu is there's going to be most likely a Righteous Glory built by SK Telecom T1 at some point. Looks like Bengi isn't really going into it right now. Yeah, he just wants the magic resist right now. He, his team needs an Aegis of the Legion. But here's a teleport turnaround. Bengi wants to go for it. There's going to be so much chain slow. Catch, going to get hit by a cleaver all the same. And here come the axes. They want to turn on to Secret. Secret has his ultimate, but that doesn't help the true damage provided by the Zolov. Catch Soul has no mana. Pop out and flash out of his own ultimate in an attempt to escape. It's not going to work. Cleaver after Cleaver landing, and Secret Here has comes Belkaz. No oh, can Belkaz get it? Here we oh go. The my. big beam over the wall and the turnaround. Sassin on the roam, but what will they lose for this? Tier 2 is already down. This game has gotten silly. This game is very silly. I like how they hit, they're putting damage onto an inhibitor turret with their Baron. Oh, they don't even have the mid lane tower down. Faker's going <laughs> to fix that problem. So, double kill for Spenu, but they lose two towers for it. Yeah. That's Sassen starting to hit pretty hard. He has the Leandri's Torment with his Sorcerer sh shoes, so he has pretty good magic penetrations. He will destroy Faker if he can get a combo off on it. <laughs> yeah, Faker playing pretty far back. Faker actually going for a Zonia's Hourglass. I don't blame him if Super he gets early, caught. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he basically just has to ride out the storm of the ultimate from Velkaz in this particular instance. So the stats may not be helping him, but the active means at least he may be able to survive the beam. He has 30 magic penetration at this point. They get a little bit extra gold from that Izzyr turret there. Now, what is Spenu looking to do? How do you think how do you think Velkaz actually learns things about people after he disintegrates them? It's kind of counterintuitive. Yeah. There is this theory about black holes where things go into a black hole and it's disintegrated, but the information is retained on the surface of the black hole is what I've read. So it could it could be working on some sort of that kind of principle there. Maybe. Maybe. And maybe they maybe things aren't truly disintegrated into just like, you know, just like burnt ashes and flakes. It could be disintegrating to data. Who knows? <laughs> you just transform he transforms you into data directly. Into ones and zeros. You become a binary being. Yep. Living inside of Velkaz, I guess. Oh. Well Velkaz has Velkaz has learned plenty from Faker this <laughs> game. Yeah, you think you wouldn't really need to learn anymore, would you? <laughs> is it, isn't there all there is to know? Well, I guess he hasn't truly disintegrated Faker's Azir yet, so just bits and pieces of him. Just bits and pieces. Well, the early Baron helping out SKT, but they have had a couple instances of drastic overextension. And, you know, that's allowed Soul to close the CS gap against Marin. Yeah. And he is up a kill and two assists, so I think they are fairly even in gold at this point with uh, with those stats as well. Marin just continually taking the jungle. Yeah, Has Marin. to run around a circle right here. He's a little bit worried about Sasin, but Sasin actually not in the mid lane to collapse on him at the moment. Soul has mana now, so Marin has to be careful. And I think actually it may be a good idea for the Rise to build Umbrella Nomicon this game against the against the. Um, against the, uh, wow, against the Mundo here. So he can at least duel the Mundo through his ultimate. Yeah, maybe, just trying to get that Grievous Wounds proc down to prevent it from healing up. Yeah, I think you might be right, but they, they also have the Velkos for that in team fights. But yes. again, that does require a lot of focus from the Velkos onto that champion. But Velkos does so much AOE damage, so maybe not a big concern for Spenu Sonic Boom. But meanwhile, there is a needlessly large rod on Sasin. So we'll see what he decides to build that into, whether he's going to go for the flat damage on the Rabidon's death cap, or which he is, looks like, with the blasting wand. <laughs> I love it. Why not? Just go big or go home if you're going to play mid lane Belkaz against yeah. Faker. Marin has to run away from that, uses his ultimate. 
to make a quick escape down the lane. Still a lot of pressure coming in. We're looking at SKT's possible dragon number three in a minute 45. As they set up a large array of wards across the map, starting to encroach upon Spenu's territory with their ward line. Well, Dawson trying to get some damage on Bang, does about half of his health. And he missed pretty much two of his abilities there, too. And that was just with just the ultimate. Well, we know Vilkaz can do damage if he gets one of those full channel ults off. That's why people used to play him support, was because he didn't need items as long as he had his passive procs just to get off the damage. Problem comes when you are uh, you have an Olaf and a Mundo on top of yeah. you. What exactly are you going to do? And Olaf has the... You can't use your ult unless you want to take a lot of damage yeah, yourself. Yeah, seriously. You're just going to sit there where, well, Olaf use, uses reckless swings on top of your head. <laughs> Beating on your dome. And we have Olaf with that Righteous Glory, like I said. And Actually, yeah, that surprises me that he got it before the Aegis. Yeah. So I think the idea is just to find one person, catch them out. But Soul's on the side. He's at three stacks. Quickly activate his passive, but does not decides not to go for an aggressive engage. All right, Marin's back right now. Is he gonna, no, he's not gonna TP, just instead home guarding straight down to the pit. They don't wanna fight if they don't have to. SK Telecom just gets a web of wards up in the river. They wanna bait this a little bit. It's gonna be hard against Sasan, and here we go. Attempt at an engage. Actually, Secret's already used his talisman. It's up right now. Still a lot of poke damage from Bang. And he, oh, he gets Bangy. Bang is knocked up. And there's the there's the ultimate Ragnarok coming in right now, but they can't actually close the gap. The talisman is going to get them out. Now Bengi turns around. Remember, he can't get out of that right now. Just as the ghost, Bengi's gonna go down. Meanwhile, Baron in the back line, and look oh at the beam! My Absolutely God. annihilating Faker. And now this Mundo, he can't do anything. Baron late to the fight. And Spenu takes out two for none. They're gonna get a tier two here almost certainly. Wolf trying to get away. Soul uses the ultimate for the He's speed boost. Range. Has to flash in the end. The so tier two is going to go down. What do you do now if you're spending? Do you go for the inhibitor? Do you go for the neutral objectives? Still up on the map. But Marn is going to take away this dragon to even it out to two and two. Uh, three and one. Three and one. Oh, sorry. Three and one. Yeah, and they're going to sacrifice the inhibitor for it, but with Faker still down, it's questionable whether they would have been able to defend it anyway, so at least they take an objective. But Spenu uses a very poor engage by SK Telecom to take an, to take an edge, and now they're going to be able to maybe take this Baron. This might be too much to ask yeah. for. They, they could deny the wards, but they can't go for this Baron. Instead, they're just going to take the Crab. But there's a real chance for a counter Baron. Oh, Here geez. comes Secret. the TP. Secret gets slowed. Secret poked out. And Secret just going to headbutt over the wall by using the blue buff. But that's going to give up the Baron to SK Telecom T1. Spenu look good, but they're just giving up these objectives too easily right now. Well, they did get... They got the inhibitor, and I like the fact that Marin did very good damage control. And we've seen this from Marin, but what... That, that was, was weird. Uh, that's just a visual bug. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we've seen this from Marin before. Remember, he saved the playoffs for SKT in that best of five against CJ yeah. when his entire team was down. He thinks really well on his feet, and he's the main shock caller. When he's the only one alive, I agree with him right there. Take the dragon, because you're going to lose the inhibitor no matter what. Let's so look at this play again. I mean, he's just not there, though. Bengi going in, he can never find it, and then catch turns around right at the end so that he bottles up the Olaf so no one Wow, Sassen with the flash knockup into the ultimate. Yeah, beautiful Velkos play. Why does this guy champ practice this champion this much? <laughs> I mean, maybe he just he was waiting to pull it out against Faker. That's all he was waiting for. Reminder that SKT has no kills <laughs> so far in this game, yet they have had two Barons. Yep. <laughs> Two Barons, three Dragons. It's just, it's my kind of game. They're Barry. up. I want, them, I want them to win without killing anybody. All right, Barry gets caught out. Goodbye. Oh, oh what? 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 <laughs> Secret, are you kidding me? I, 
I don't even have words <laughs> for that. Martin, I would be grinning <laughs> ear to ear if I was Martin. I'd be like, what just oh happened? Oh my god. TP on a faker coming in right now. And Rise gonna zip on by with the home guards faker He's in a world him. of hurt. Goodbye. So another Baron buff eliminated Spenu. spenu has been doing a good job of playing aggressively during these Barons from SKT to slowly peel them off all the members one by one. I am so mentally destroyed still by that <laughs> Alistar headbutt. Just no words. I'm so done with this guy. <laughs> you don't like Spenu moments? Oh, man. On the plus side, that teleport was much better than we normally see from Spenu. Yeah, definitely. And Soul wasn't mentally destroyed by that. Ooh, get the solo kill in the mid lane. SKT played pretty questionably this game. Marin on top of Nuclear, though. Can oh, they actually no. peel him off? Here comes Bengi, Ragnarok in effect. There's a... Here <laughs> comes a tank sandwich. The tank sandwich. Both of them oh. coming in at ramming speed. <laughs> Always, always painful, and the exhaust means that nuclear not gonna be able to do much against it. Yeah. Well, finally the ages is done for Bengi, so they're gonna take a little bit less damage now. And Sawson decided against the Rabadon's death cap and went straight into the void staff. Smart he should, choice. He should definitely go Echo here. Luden's Echo. I, that's what I think. Your ratios aren't that good anyway, but mm -hmm. the extra AOE damage and poke damage might actually be useful. And the extra ratio on the Ludens that goes Or itself. Zonia's, because uh -huh. he has to deal with uh, the Olaf, so Zonia's could be quite powerful. True, true, true. Well, well I mean, SKT, they're going to be able to defend this minion wave, but it, this has turned into a very sloppy game. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, SKT has more ways to win when this inhibitor comes back <laughs> up because they have the, they have dragon stacks. So, well, Spenu, Sonic Boom wants to live up to a third of their name, Sonic, by going really, really fast. <laughs> they have a Talisman Ascension. They have the Silver Ultimate. They have the Righteous Glory. That's a lot of really good peel, considering that all they need to do. They played that last team fight so well when Beggy came in because they yeah. realized that once the Ragnarok was gone. There wasn't anything else they could do, and then they just turned right on top of them. And it, I think that's a great way to use the Jarvanult. It's the dream for them if they can get Mundo and Olaf in the Jarvanult, because there's no way out for those two champions. Definitely. Jarvan looking like the smart pickup right now, and Sasson going to stick around to the left and zone SKT away. Are they looking for the inhibitor as it respawns? No, they must be. Dragon up in one minute, so they also have pressure for the Dragon itself, and SKT just totally in the dark down on that side of the river. Marin in the front line right now, no attempt at a flank. Nuclear actually gets hit by some Corky Pope, and they're gonna try and disengage with the Talisman, but that's not gonna stop Marin over the Rune Prison might. Here we go, SKT wants to make a move on this. They don't have enough quite yet. Marin getting a little bit low. Oh. There's a double knockup. they caught Bang. Bang has to Falk out. Secret on the side. Bangy trying to get into that back line. Marin is bottled up inside the Cataclysm catch, flashing out of that, but Soul still the target. Bengi low, Faker low, but Secret's already dead. Soul gonna flash in, he's gonna take out oh the Corky. Faker gets the Zonias, but he is not going to die in the end. Oh, Sassen, geez. Faker with a triple kill, playing on the brink right there. Will Marin, he get more? Yes, Marin is definitely gonna get more, but not going to be a cleanup pentakill for Faker. Faker really did well that fight. The Zonias bait brought Sassen in and then they were able to finish him off. You would think as a Valkaz you could wait just a little bit further out Yeah. as Faker comes back up, but he immediately flashed as soon as he came out of the stasis. And what will SK Telecom look for? Is it Dragon number four? Yes, this is definitely the more important objective right now. They need to continue stacking these dragons. Well, Sonic Boom looks so good, they were up so many kills, and now all of a sudden, SKT has five. Yeah, the reason why you don't go for that is you're low, number one, so you never know what nuclear is going to be able to do, especially once the Civil comes back up. Right. And also, Baron's up in a minute, so you don't want to get in a situation where they have the inhibitor down, but it just went down, so there's no super minion pressure coming in, and they can contest Baron and Dragon. Yeah, let's so, look at this fight again. Yeah, I mean, Baron does work on the side right here. Great tornado hits Sassen up, and he gets a good ult into the choke. Wolf saves this fight, hands yeah. down. 
good monsoon there, so he gets a knockback to interrupt the ultimate. Soul decides to go forward. Now Faker gets chunked out pretty severely, but gets the Zonias. And now Sassen's on cooldown. Beautiful flash backwards, has a shield on him from Wolf, and then uses his summoner heal just to turn it around for the triple. Well played by Faker indeed. Really, Wolf was the hero of that fight. Yeah, though. definitely. That monsoon. I think the ultimate channel is nearly done anyways, but at least stop that last tick, which could have changed things with how low um, re le the rest of SKT were looking. Yeah, Marin now. He has got his nice little six item stack right there. Interestingly, not going for that much magic resist, only the spirit visage in this build. Yeah, and SK, rest of SKT taking Baron. Yep, TP's coming in, TP right on the edge for this, and there's the Baron, goes over, Faker grabs it, but that was Wolf dying nearly immediately. They're just trying to disengage right now, Baron in from the side, trying to get on his soul. There's the smite, but there's too much from SK Telecom right now. Sasin just joining the fight. He's gonna get a beam over oh. the wall. Bang is just nailed into the wall after the Rise Rune Prison kept oh him there. My. And Sasin gets the kill to Faker. Oh. The double. Will he get a triple? Nuclear almost dead. Where's that Mundo ult? It's still about 20 seconds out. He's gonna escort, he's gonna escort Nuclear out. Uh, he's going to try and get it even so. Marin has a lot of HP, but there you go, a little bit of a slow. And that's going to be too much. So Marin actually lives while SKT gets the Baron. They now have an 8k gold lead. Sasin was there late, but man, Soul's rune prison into that beam on Bang was so <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> The full channel right there on the squishy. Yeah, and SKT, of course they were going to move forward right there. Sasin was just hit him with a max range beam. You couldn't really be more safe than Bag. He yeah. was hugging the wall on the opposite side of Not River. Not his fault at all. Which is a great play from Sasin. Well, Mundo is six items. He has a Warmonks, which is being boosted by the Cinder Hulk. Let's take a look at this again. So the way this fight starts, Wolf actually doesn't have a chance to do much besides just blow his monsoon and immediately die. Now Marin gets low but has his ultimate available. Look at Sasin on the side, does slow up Marin a little bit. Now they commit to this, but look at that. Oh my lord. Bang. Now he had a QSS, but he actually used it early. Yeah, right he used it a little too early. He used it early, so he got hit by the Rune Prison after. Well, just well played by Sasin, to be honest. Knowing, knowing the limits on a, of his champion. Well, Soul is getting really scary, and even though SKT has this gold lead, the, the rise is rapidly approaching six items, has a GA. Right. So I would be a little bit concerned if I was SKT, because the amount of damage that's coming out right now was Luden's Echo, uh -huh. by the way, for the Velkaz. And he has another needlessly large rod. With what will he bite into? Is Azonia's Hourglass or a Rabadon's Death Cap? I would maybe lean towards a Rabadon's Death Cap. Because uh, if you're really confident that Rise and Jarvan are going to peel for you, yeah. then I agree. Well, I feel like in most, of the fight, in most of these fights, what's going on is that Soul gets in there, SKT dumps all of their cooldowns on Soul, which leaves Sasan unmolested in the back. So he doesn't even need Azonia's Hourglass to pump out damage. It's also that Ketch has been doing a very good job of timing his Jarvan ultimates to deal with the Mundo and the Olaf. Definitely. So, I would say this is a game where you would feel okay in getting a Rabadon's Death Cap over your Zonia's Hourglass. And there's also a Zeke's Herald for Wolf in this game. Wow. Uh, they know that with all this AP damage that Bang does need a little bit of lifesteal tanking. Marin is huge. Yeah. And... What will the last item on Rise be? Mar or SKT should absolutely just push this wave, get as much harassment down as possible. And there we go, oh. there's the engage. Two-man knockoff. Baker oh is my annihilated. Sasset actually lives. Bang can't finish the kill. Bang is going to get some damage down there, diving the Azir turret. But two members live with a sliver of health. I just can't believe Sasset lived through that. Baker died. During the knockup, in the one or 1 1.5 seconds that he's knocked up, he destroyed oh, him. He got destroyed. That, he has GA. He has GA, but there's still a full health Mundo next to him, and that's going to be the end of Soul. And that was a very poor fight from Spenu. Oh, jeez. 
Well, here comes Sawson. Yeah, Barn. Big raid boss. Barn gonna die, but Bang's still alive with full HP and a lot of poke. He's doing a very good job of kiting this. And the question is, can they delay this dragon enough? I think they can, but Spenu looks like they want to push up the midway. Spenu messed that up so badly. They needed to prevent this fifth dragon. They absolutely had to. Now, they may be able to still do it. Looks like they can. But you don't walk into that pit right there while SKT is still around, when you know that you have to get the dragon. Yeah, but Bang's Sauson still harassing. just zoning. Sauson doing good damage. You just recall and go forward and wait for it. Oh, dear. Not going to actually finish it off. They get the dragon, and they're going to get out safe. So Sauson. Spenu turns it around. Sauson's knockups have been so good in this game so far. But uh oh, uh -oh. Uh oh. And then he has to go do that. <laughs> This game has been silly. Silly. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good word for it. What? Okay, is Nuclear gonna run away? No, is... Faker's gonna get him. <laughs> Faker has to flash for it, but gets the Sand Soldier to drive the spear through Sivir's heart. What and Marin... is Marin doing? <laughs> he, he needed that ward, Barry. He really wanted that ward in there, and he's in SKT's base. Phoning the rest of his team in. Just give him a call. Yep. Come right in, guys. It's a free inhibitor. And I think they may be able to take the Nexus here with the Azir. You have 20 seconds before Sawson comes up. Mart actually taking a lot of damage from this turret. Now the engage, but Secret has to use his ult very early on. And that yep. is just Catch trying to bottle him up, but he has no more damage. Soul cannot get a kill. And in the end, SK Telecom is going to win this game. Sawson's back up. Will he get a, a sick, sick ultimate? Oh, there it goes. He oh, gets no, it. He died. gets he one, but he dies. He got no one. He got no one. Oh, I thought he actually managed to take somebody out on the top side, but that was just bang flashing out of it. Mar doesn't even look happy after that game. I wouldn't be happy <laughs> if I was SK Telecom. Team. He got taken to the brink by a mid Velkaz. <laughs> I had hoped that uh, Spenu would win because that would have been hilarious. Yes, that would have. But honestly, Spenu did much better tonight than I would have thought. Yeah, definitely. That second game looked so crisp for at moments, and then there were just these small mistakes that they made repeatedly. I mean, that's a, that's a hard loss for Spenu, but yeah. honestly, like, it's not that bad because they did well in game one. They snuck that bear, and they tried mm -hmm. to turn it around, had some decent shot calling. And game two, man, they were looking pretty smart in terms of their team fighting. Definitely. Especially catch who he was locking down with the Jarvan. It looked like they were taking steps forward, and they really did push SKT to the limit. But in the end, some of these 